Hi, this is group 15, and today we would like to introduce the story of Chris and his workout plan. He's a 25 years old young man working in Hong Kong, 170 centimeters tall and weights 80 kilograms, with BMI 27.5 and body fat 30%. Consider the four key requirements. Keep a normal body weight, low budget, allow flexible time and place, we develop a house of quality to help identify the most important factors impact on exercise output. From the importance results values, the exercise frequencies, calorie consumptions, and intensity are the three prioritized actions and their performance will be measured. Applying a process capability technique, Chris would get alerted on short-term frequency change if shifting while long-term frequency variation can justify if it exercises in a disciplined way. Similar measurements can be conducted for exercise consumption and intensity. So Chris could know if calorie consumption is moderate or significant, and which intensity zone he belongs to by doing either cardio or HRIT exercise. This is the calculated calories burned based on the body data of Chris. Basically, we will take running as a sample because it is the most doable cardio exercise, which do not need any other equipment. This is the data of calories burned for HRIT. Difference from cardio training, HRIT is also quite effective with short period of time. Also, it has turns of combinations. Trainees can create their own workout combination based on their ability, from less intensive like plank and crunches to high intensive like squats and push-ups. This is the fishbone diagram to analyze why Hong Kong people are getting fat. Of course, diet is one of the cause, but we will focus more on workout and lifestyle in this project. The following are the analysis of why Hong Kong people are getting fat. Firstly, they have no time to work out. The average working hour per week in Hong Kong is 50.1, 38% above the global average. People even work for 5.5 to 6 days per week, so they need more non-office hours for their workout. Secondly, Hong Kong is small. The rental fee is one of the highest in the world. That's why the cost of running a gym is high. It is also reflects on the membership fee. Due to the high price, people spend their money on other entertainment instead of the gym. Lastly, the workout culture in Hong Kong is not as good as in Western countries. Hong Kong citizens do not obtain a rich knowledge about workout. In this project, we will find out which approach will be more suitable for Hong Kong people. After the analysis, we can conclude that HRIT is more effective in losing weight in terms of calories burned over time. However, due to its high intensity, HRIT is more suitable for people who already have regular training. Ordinary people who do not have a workout habit may not be able to catch up with the HRIT workout. Both running and HRIT are free to charge. We do not need to go to the gym or any other equipment. HRIT is workable even if the workout time is short. Therefore, HRIT is more suitable for the busy Hong Kong people. However, they need to have basic and regular training. For beginner like Chris, Cardio training is more suggested, even if the efficiency is not as good as HRIT. From the quick outcome of qualitative analysis, we found that cardio exercise is better for beginners. As running is the most common and available cardio exercise, we designed an experiment to study the key factors of running on fat burning. Luckily, we got the running data of a Garmin user with a similar physical condition to Chris and utilized this data to do the DOE analysis. Four factors that may affect fat burning include where to run, how long it lasts, how intensive, and how fast we run. We use the average heart rate as the index for intensity and set the response to be the calories burned after every run. From the Pareto chart, it can be seen that duration, intensity, interaction of duration and intensity, interaction of duration, intensity and cadence are important factors to the response calories burned. Time and cadence alone are not significant to the calories burned. 
The main effect plot shows that both duration and intensity have a significant effect on the calories burned. It also shows when to run does not matter, especially after considering intensity. Doing high-intensive running in the morning will burn more calories than in the afternoon, while the opposite is true for low-intensive running. The cadence alone has little impact, but it can better enhance the fat-burning effects of high-intensive running. The DOE result implies that beginners can choose any time that suits them to run. The key is to maintain a relatively long running time and run harder. If you have enough time, you can run longer with low intensity. If not, you can do high intensive running for more than 20 minutes. Failure mode and effect analysis is a tool that helps identify and prioritize potential obstacles to losing weight and staying healthy. As mentioned before, lack of time, money, access to exercise places, motivation, and ineffective exercise are common barriers in which lack of time has the most risk priority number. But with dedication and discipline, one can overcome these challenges, incorporate exercise into daily routine, utilize low-cost or free options, and seek guidance from a professional could be a good solution. Also remember to set realistic goals, celebrate small victories, and stay motivated. After applying Six Sigma DMAI, Chris created a one-week cardio exercise schedule with workouts lasting 30 minutes to achieve his weight loss goals. He estimated burning 300 calories per workout and planned to lose one pound in the first week with consistent caloric intake. Despite his efforts, his initial results were unsatisfactory. Therefore, Chris decides to use statistical process control to investigate the problem. He found that the calories consumption kept decreasing throughout the week. The decreasing trend also applies to HR value. Seems that the intensity of exercise keeps decreasing throughout the week. This applies that Chris must be very tired from running every day, causing him to run slower and cover less distance. As such, Chris revised the workout plan and take breaks in between to avoid burnout. The plan is effective for him. He decided to include HRIT exercise in the third week since he got used to the current exercise intensity. Chris successfully losing weight with the help of Six Sigma approach. How about you guys? Remember, the goal of Six Sigma is to continuously improve and optimize processes. So always be open to making adjustments to your plan based on your results and feedback from your body.